morning and welcome to Liberty Church Manzini. Thank you for joining us this morning. We are thankful to be in the presence of the Lord as we do it via Facebook Live, on WhatsApp, and on YouTube. And we invite you to join us in worshiping the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. Amen. I'm praying that it will be online as it is in heaven. We we'll worship the Lord, our God, who is love, as we praise Him and thank Him for all that He has done. Let us pray. Father, thank you today for the gift of life. Thank you today for protection. Thank you today for the experience of your love. We praise you and we worship you. We pray that you would receive Right. 
one more time. place as we yes. continue to worship him as Lou said we encourage you to join us in worshiping in his presence because he is love and he is with us and he's deserving of our praise and our glory and so we thank you father we worship you we worship you lord Yeah. 
of him and through him for of him and through him and to him are all things for of him and through him for of him you as you're joining in from wherever you are whatever is going on in our circumstances and there's a lot going on right now we are getting messages that people's family members are sick or have passed away people have lost incomes and on and on and so much is happening in our world just want to encourage us that when we sing these songs and we say that of him and through him and to him are all things we're declaring something extremely powerful we're joining with all of heaven where Jesus is sitting on the throne with the Father. And we're declaring that he is sitting on the throne of our lives and our hearts. So whatever is going on, whatever seems insurmountable, is no longer insurmountable. Because the one who is above all of it is with us. And so I want to encourage you right now, if you have a prayer request, if you have a need in your life, I know I have a few. Let's bring them up to the one who, to whom all things belong, to whom all power belongs, 
the one who is able to do more than we will even ask right now whatever it is let's lift our hands in surrender let's open our hearts to him and let's pray together church and bring these needs before him heavenly father we thank you oh jesus you sit on the throne you are worthy you are worthy and you are worthy of us bringing our needs to you because you god have shown your faithfulness to us you are faithful god you have saved us you have healed us you have helped us you've provided for us so god we bring all of our needs and our requests right now and we place them again before you once again we're here where you have told us to come with boldness like children who are loved we come and we place our requests father we need healing we remember many of our friends and we ask you to touch their bodies lord father we need wisdom we remember our leaders and we ask you to touch their minds and fill them with wisdom and plans god lord we need peace we ask you to touch all of us and give us peace and joy and comfort and strength god we need provision give us our daily bread give us what we need lord and also god we remember to give you thanks because you have done so much lord god each of us where we are lord right now we lift up our thanks for the specific things you have done god i give you thanks for healing my body lord god i give you thanks lord god for providing for me god and my family lord god father i give you thanks lord god father for peace for miracles lord god father i give you thanks for passports being approved lord god for documentation going through that we've been praying for i give you thanks lord god for this time that we have lord to gather in a different way but to gather nonetheless in jesus name we pray and wherever you are everybody said amen amen, amen church welcome to church as lou mentioned it looks a bit different but we are the church and so we still gather my name is zinti and along with my husband lou we are the community pastors at liberty church manzini we normally gather at our new location which you may have come to which is right on 10 bergen street next to build it but today we're gathering with you in your home and wherever you're listening to this from huge huge welcome if you're joining us for the first time we are so so excited and i'd like to encourage you wherever you're listening from if you're on facebook right now please just type in the comments or send us a message let us know that you are joining us for the first time um, if you listen to this over whatsapp send us a whatsapp and just let us know that you're joining us for the first time we'd love to thank you and appreciate you and hopefully connect you to become a part of this family that is liberty church manzini I'd also like to take a moment right now and as we carry on in this attitude of worship, I want to speak especially to those that call Liberty Church Manzini home um, and encourage us to continue to worship the Lord through our giving. As a church community, we give our tithe and we give our offering and the tithe is a 10% of our increase maybe our salary maybe our profit in business and just 10 percent we bring it first to the lord the one we just worshiped in song we worship him with our finances and so the ways to give can be received in various ways again if you need them please send us a message but we can give through eft we can also give through momo and we can continue to give and be generous during this time and our offering is over and above the 10 percent there's so many needs right now there's so much work to be done and it's being done so much good has happened here at liberty church manzini and i know in many churches that are gathering right now continuing to be strong even during this time so let's give our offering to bless and and support the work that is happening can i just pray for us as we prepare our hearts to give and if you need um, direction on the ways to give please send us a message let's pray god i thank you for the generosity of your people I pray over every person right now as they choose to be faithful to return to you the tithe, God, and to honor you in that way. I pray for every person that is choosing right now to be generous, God, and give an offering over and above the 10%, Lord God. I pray that, Lord, you would bless those that are giving. God, I pray, Father, that you would, as Malachi says, open the floodgates of heaven and pour out your blessing upon them, that there would be enough for them and their family, and that it would overflow to those around them. In Jesus' name, amen. 
We're going to take some time um, to get ourselves ready for the word. Lou has an exciting word prepared for us. So give us just a minute, wherever you are, grab your Bible, grab your notebook or your phone, wherever you take notes, and take a seat as we get ready for God's word this morning. Thank you so much once again for joining us we are going to go straight into the word of god i'm excited to be teaching today a message that i've entitled gaining complete victory if you are seated with someone next to you tell them i want to be victorious and as you say that to them i would like us to turn our bibles to judges chapter 1 verse 19 and 20. In this place, we hear a narration of what happened in the tribe of Judah, where they were about to enter the promised land and the, their land had been allocated. And the Lord tells them that Judah is the one who's supposed to get their inheritance first. But listen to the narration of what actually happens when they go into battle. Judges chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. It says, The Lord was with the people of Judah. And they took possession of the land. But they failed to drive out the people living in the plains who had iron chariots. Verse 20 continues to say, The town of Hebron was given to Caleb as Moses had promised. And Caleb drove out the people living there who had descendants of the three sons of Anak. If you see in these two verses, there is a contrast. There is Judah in verse 19 who fails to conquer all of his enemies. And then there is Caleb who was given a specific town. I believe he is one of those from Judah. And Caleb he was one of the spies who had gone into Judah. And Caleb manages to drive out the people living in his land. And actually, Caleb was fighting against giants. These were the sons of Anak. These were the guys who were really big, really strong. And yes, Judah as well had people who were on iron chariots. So it's not like one of them had like a lesser enemy. These were both formidable enemies. But somehow, even though the Lord was with both of them, Judah managed to conquer some, but Caleb conquered all. So if Judah could fail to overcome when God was with them, it tells me that there is another factor that is key to our victory and not just the presence of the Lord. And we know that the presence of God is powerful and because we are believers, we have the presence of the Lord. But Judah here has the presence of the Lord, but somehow he does not conquer all of his enemies. And as I observe in verse 20, Caleb manages to do it. So Caleb seems to have an ingredient that we need to have if we are going to gain complete victory. So I begin to ask myself, what did Caleb have that you and I need to have so that we can be completely victorious? What do we need to possess that we can learn from Caleb? 
I took some time to think about this because if we realize what we are observing here, we are observing church, that it is possible that God can give us victory but somehow we fail to walk in the completeness of that victory. We are observing here that we could be victorious, we could have been given authority in a certain way but not enjoy the power and the presence of God that has been given to us in that area even though it is ours to possess. Examples of these kinds of enemies that we need to overcome are things like fear. You know, maybe in the area of fear, you have overcome in part. Maybe you used to struggle with anxiety and you have overcome in that area. But maybe there is still a fear of rejection. Where you find that even though you know what the Lord has called you to do, you are afraid to do it because you might be rejected by those that you love. You have overcome in part. You are like Judah. You have overcome some, but then there are these others with iron chariots that you still need to overcome. Maybe it's in the area of your thought life. Maybe you have overcome the battle of evil thoughts, but somehow you still find that you battle jealousy and envy. Maybe when your friends get blessed and seem to be getting ahead of you, even though you don't think evil towards them, somehow there is still a root of jealousy and bitterness towards them. You, you've definitely had some victory, but you haven't yet gained complete victory. Maybe this could even be financial. You know, maybe you've overcome the enemy of being in debt, but you're still living from month to month, where if something didn't come at the end of this month, like some of us are experiencing with COVID, it can really throw you off. So I would like today to help us realize this extra ingredient that we need to have to gain a complete victory. So back to our earlier question. What did Caleb have that we need to have if we are going to go to a place of experiencing complete victory over fear? If we are going to go to a place of experiencing complete victory over all of the iron chariot enemies. You know, as I was thinking about iron chariots, it stood out to me that iron is very hard. So this speaks about things that are not easily overcome. How do we get to the place where we overcome what we, maybe we can call strongholds? Or maybe call the, I don't know what your iron chariot enemy is. But I believe, as I was looking at Caleb's life, I believe that ingredient is an attitude of persistence. An attitude of persistence. Listen to how the Lord describes Caleb as he is talking about him in the book of Numbers chapter 14 verse 24. The Lord says, but my servant Caleb has a different attitude than the others have. He has remained loyal to me. So I will bring him into the land he explored. And listen to this last part. His descendants will possess their full share of the land. His descendants will possess everything. The descendants of Caleb received everything because Caleb had this tendency to persist. The Lord says he has remained loyal to me. So the Lord described this man who managed to defeat all of his enemies as someone who has a different attitude, an attitude of remaining. So if you and I are going to possess the full land, if you and I are going to influence those around us, our children, our employees, to go into the fullness of what they've been given, we need to have this attitude of remaining. We need to have this attitude of persistence. To gain complete victory, we must stay in the fight long enough to be present when the Lord gives us our window of opportunity to overcome. Let us pray. Father, I pray that you open our eyes to see the secret of gaining complete victory by persisting. I pray that you help us that even after we have failed a couple times that we come back and stay in the fight.
I pray that we wage spiritual warfare until we completely overcome. May all those who are listening today, all those who are a part of the Liberty family, come to this place where they possess their full share of the land that you have given us. Whether it's in finances, Lord. Whether it's in our relationships. In every area where you have blessed us. I pray that we would walk in that blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we see here from Caleb that the secret to gaining complete victory lies in having an attitude of persistence. And you know, for us to fully appreciate this, we need to understand that Caleb had remained loyal to God even when others had decided to turn away. Others had said, these giants are too big. We don't want to go into the promised land anymore. But Caleb and Joshua, but I'm highlighting Caleb here because we see him even at the end of his life still continuing in this attitude of persistence. Caleb is an example of how in order for us to experience the victory of our enemies, we must persist in trusting God. We must have an attitude of persistence even when faced with iron chariots. Maybe you look at your life and the stuff that is facing you during this pandemic feels like an iron chariot. I'm speaking to you today to persist, to build and to develop this attitude of persistence because even when we are faced with enemies that don't die easily, we can overcome. Even when we are faced with times when we have failed a couple times, we can rise up. You know, the Bible says a righteous man may fall, but he will rise. We will rise and we will overcome. We must persist because victory is the result of staying long in the fight. Staying long enough to recover from your failures. Staying loyal to what God has called you, even when your feelings change their mind. I'm not sure about you, but feelings have a tendency of changing their mind. You wake up today, you are excited. You wake up tomorrow, somehow, you're just not excited. It's the same day, it's the same sun, it's the same house, it's the same spouse. But somehow, you are not as excited as you used to. But persistence comes from staying loyal to what God has called you to do, even when your feelings change their mind. You know, we must persist because victory always comes not to those who are fast or smart or lucky. No. Victory comes to those who stay long, long enough to be present when God opens the door and allows you to overcome. And may I say, church, the day is coming. The time is coming. There is an appointed time for you to possess your full end. Persist. Jesus taught us persistence. He taught us persistence when he gave us the parable of the persistent widow. She eventually got justice from an unrighteous judge because she persisted. It wasn't even because the judge was like a good man, but it was because she persisted. Jesus taught us about persistence when he shared the parable of the persistent friend. He kept knocking and knocking until eventually he got loaves for his guests. Jesus is showing us that persistence is the key to overcoming. It is the key to gaining complete victory. And you know, the one thing that is encouraging about persistence is that persistence can be developed. Persistence is not a personality type. Persistence is not found in the genes. I'm trying to see, I'm not sure, maybe we can ask the scientists after I'm done preaching. I don't remember hearing about a gene for persistence. Maybe there's a gene for the color of your hair, there's a gene for the color of your skin, but there is no gene for persistence. Persistence, even though it can be modeled, it is not inherited. So, if you look at yourself today and you think, I can do with a little more persistence in my attitude. I would like to share with you three important practices that help you develop an attitude of persistence. And as I do, I would like to invite you to engage and participate in them. 
They are the secret to gaining victory. Not luck. They are the secret to gaining victory. Not the people that I hang out with. They are the secret to gaining victory because the Lord is already with you. If you believe in Jesus, if you are following Jesus, the presence of God lives right inside you. So you have the presence. You, like Judah, already have the presence. You have it in you. Christ, the hope of glory, is living in you. The key now is your attitude. And if you walk in this attitude, victory is assured. So three keys to building your persistence. Number one, read your Bible daily. Number two, pray. And number three, do not neglect fasting. These three pillars are persistence builders. When we continue in them, they build that muscle of persistence. Remember I said it's not a, pers a personality type. So it's already in you. You just need to develop it. And like a muscle, when you develop it, it grows. It grows until you have the tenacity to face the giant like David did and pull down Goliath. Until you have the tenacity to go against the iron chariots and overcome. The key is a believer, number one, Read your Bible daily. Number two, pray. Pray without ceasing. And number three, fast. The Bible says, when you fast, not if you fast. To build our persistence, we must be rooted and grounded in these three important practices. Let's look at them briefly and then we'll round off the service. Number one, reading the Bible. You know, to be persistent in waiting for God's promises, we must know God's promises. But how will I know God's promises if I don't read about them? So the key to being persistent in waiting for a promise that God has given me is to know that that promise has been given to me. And knowing comes from reading about it and reading about it is reading the Bible. So like the necessary time goes, read your Bible every day. You know, to build an, an attitude of persistence, we must begin by reading the promises that our Father has made to us. And I just want to say that God's word is God's promise. When we read it, we remember the promise. So we read to know, but we also read to remember. There are some things that we already know, but we need reminding. David says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not. Do not forget. We have this tendency to forget. And when we forget, we begin to turn back. And when the Israelites forgot what the Lord had done for them when he parted the sea, they said, we no longer want to go into the promised land. But I believe Caleb had the attitude of remembering that comes from having the promises at the front of my mind. You know, when we meditate on God's promises, we are bringing them to life in our spirit so that even though we haven't yet seen them fulfilled, we maintain the confidence that the one who can be trusted to keep his promise can be trusted by me. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23. Let us hold tightly without wavering. Do you see the persistence right there? Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for God can be trusted to keep his promise. So church, are you reading the Bible? Are you reading it daily? Did you read the Bible today? Did you read it yesterday? Let me invite us in 2021 to build our persistence by reading our Bible every day. And to help us read our Bible every day, I would like to give us a Bible reading plan. It will help us journey through the Old Testament 
as Liberty Manzini, we have been going through the New Testament for a couple years now, and we are going to send out a Bible reading plan to help us read our Bible journeying through the Old Testament. I invite you to participate and engage in it because that will help you remember the promises that God has made to you. However, as powerful as reading the Bible is, for it to be effective, it must be coupled with the second persistence builder, praying. You know, persistence is also developed through a life of prayer, not an event or a moment of prayer, not a season of prayer, but a life of prayer. You may be asking yourself, how? This is how it happens. After we read the word of God, we are challenged. The challenge that comes from reading the word of God is this. Oftentimes, God calls us to do things that we can never achieve in our strength. These guys were facing giants. They were facing people who had iron chariots. Now imagine maybe they had spears. But what good is a spear when it is faced against an iron chariot? What good is just a sling if it is facing an anarchite? But this is where we realize then the need for us to go to this next step. So every time God calls us to do something, it is something that is difficult for us to achieve, maybe even impossible in our own strength. Therefore, after reading, we usually feel a little inadequate. And this is where prayer comes in. When we find promises in his word that can't be brought to pass in our own ability, we are being called to pray and ask him to bring them to pass. When we find commandments in his word that seem impossible to obey or to live according to in the human nature, we are seeing an opportunity to pray that God gives us his nature. You know, prayer is connection with divine nature so that we can do here on earth things that cannot be achieved by our human nature. Prayer is connection with the one who sits on the throne so we can have authority over enemies here on earth that we cannot have authority over in our human strength. Prayer is engaging in developing this ability to persist beyond what you can do in your human strength. And so I want to invite us to develop this life of prayer in 2021. Not just a season, not just a moment, but a life of prayer. However, as effective as prayer is, there is some enemies that are not overcome by reading the Bible and praying alone. Don't get me wrong. Reading our Bible and praying every day is awesome. I do it. I teach that everybody who believes in Jesus Christ must do it. But there are some things that cannot be overcome by reading the Bible and praying alone. They need us to develop this third persistence builder of fasting. You know, there was an occasion when Jesus' disciples failed to cast out a demon. They had been given power over demons and so initially they went and they cast out demons, cast out demons and then on another occasion they tried and somehow they failed. And then Jesus comes into the situation and you get for times when Jesus comes into the situation. Jesus comes into the situation and he quickly casts the demon out. And afterwards the disciples ask Jesus, they say, why weren't we able to cast out that demon? And this was difficult for them to appreciate because just before they had been casting out demons. So it wasn't like they'd never had this experience. This had happened before, but somehow this time it was different. And as Jesus responds to them, he speaks to them about faith, and then he speaks to them about fasting. In Matthew 17 verse 21, in some Bibles you'll find it using the asterisk as a footnote. Jesus says, but an evil spirit of this kind is only driven out by prayer and fasting. An evil spirit of this kind is only driven out by prayer and fasting. Church, 
there are some things that will only be overcome by prayer and fasting. Fasting builds our attitude of persistence to the next level. It's kind of like overdrive. You know, fasting helps us gain victory in areas where no one else in our family ever gained victory before. Maybe nobody in your family has ever gotten married before. Fasting could help you develop the persistence to be the first one to do that. Maybe nobody in your family is free from financial bondage. Fasting could be that, that part that helps you step into a place where no one else in your generation is. You know, there are some evil spirits, church, that can only be driven out by prayer and fasting. These are the kinds of iron char chariot evil spirits that Judah was experiencing in the Old Testament. Judah had managed to overcome some. But they needed to be a bit more to overcome these ones. And as I close, I would like to address the question of why. Why did the Lord allow this situation? And by transference, why does the Lord allow us to go through iron chariot enemies? The answer is found in understanding the wisdom of God, the power of God, and the love of God. Let's look at the love of God. The love of God, because of God's love, he is consistently looking for ways to bless us. The Lord loves us so much. He says, I have good plans for you, plans to prosper you. But the love of God is also coupled with the wisdom of God. In his wisdom, the Lord knows that if he gave you and I everything that he desires to give us, if he gave you and I our full inheritance today, it would destroy us. The Bible teaches us that an inheritance obtained too soon is not blessed in the end. And just like the prodigal son, if we receive our inheritance before we are ready, we may squander it and we may end up eating with pigs, which symbolizes living an unclean life or basically walking away from our relationship with the Father. So God in his wisdom, he knows how much we are ready for, even though we desire for him to give us everything. This leads me to the third part, the power of God. So God in his power allows our enemies to be persistent and strong for a while. Not because they have defeated him, but because he wants to use them to strengthen us. And once we are strong and ready, he removes them from the picture completely. And we can enjoy our inheritance without losing our salvation. That is the power of persistence. If we persist, when we are blessed, we will not lose the relationship that we have with the Lord. When we receive the blessing, we will not forget the blesser. When we receive the breakthrough, we will begin to pray for breakthrough for others. Because we know the love of God. We have experienced the power of God and we have been given the wisdom of God. So I want to invite us, church, to wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. We wrestle. And I want to invite us in this season that we're preparing to go into to wrestle against these principalities. Because when we have grown strong and we have overcome, we will be found, we will be ox of righteousness, rooted and grounded in love, and we will not walk away from our faith. So let's rise up and wrestle against sexual immorality. Let's rise up and wrestle against the powers that stop people from seeing the light. I urge you and I invite you, I plead with you, don't give up in doing good. Don't give up on reading your Bible. Don't stop praying. And don't neglect fasting. Do not stop fighting in the spirit 
for those who are not able to fight for themselves. And even in this pandemic, don't allow the destruction of the pandemic to distract you from your calling to be the light. If you can't be the light in person, be the light online. If you can't smile in person, send a smiling emoji. If you can't gather in person, gather online. If you can't give in person, give online. If you can't be kind in person, be kind in a virtual way. But let us be persistent in being the church in spite of the season that we find ourselves in. Because those who stay persistent, those who stay in the fight over a long period of time, will gain complete victory. And I believe that victory is yours. Because the Lord is already with you. He is already inside you. Christ is living in you. I just urge you to persist so that you can gain the complete victory that he has given you. So beginning on Friday, we will be coming together as a church to fast and pray. And I would like to invite you to participate in it. The details are available on our social media and our website. Let me invite you to make a plan to participate in it. To begin by preparing yourself today. You know, writing down the things that you would like to be praying about. Writing down the areas where you need people to be praying with you for. And thinking through a plan for how you are going to maintain your fast. You know, sometimes we commit to fasting and then life happens and then we're like, you know what, I'll join next year. My hope is we can begin to plan now how we are going to persist in fasting even in inconvenient times. Maybe invite people to pray together with you online at certain points in the day. Let's approach this year with the attitude that guarantees victory. The attitude of persistence. So we begin praying together on Friday. It's all church prayer and fasting. And I really, really invite you to be one of those who is at the forefront of reading the word of God daily. Of praying without ceasing. And of fasting. When you fast. Not if you fast. When you fast. The details for how we can participate in the fasting hour, social media, as I've already said, my final invitation for you is to get somebody to join in this fast. Help somebody gain victory by teaching them persistence through helping them engage in these three persistence builders. I really, really believe you can be victorious. I believe it because Christ was sent for this very purpose. I believe it because everywhere where the Lord is, there is the ability to overcome. And I believe it because as I see Caleb, I see someone who is an example that when we persist, when we remain loyal to the Lord, to what he has said and to what he is doing, eventually, maybe not today, Maybe not tomorrow. Maybe not even this year. Maybe not next year. But eventually, at some point, if we stay persistent in this fight, we will overcome. Amen. As we close this service, I would like to invite you to give your life to Jesus if you have never given your life to him. As I was talking about how Christ is in us, Maybe you felt that he is not yet in you. Well, I want you to know that he can be in you. The Bible says when we accept him, when we believe in him, and when we confess our sins, we will be saved. And you can receive him today by confessing with your mouth that you believe and you want to accept him. So I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And as I lead us in that prayer, I want to invite you to pray these words after me as you give your life to Jesus. Let's all say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the one who overcame. And today, I accept you 
into my life. I accept you into my heart. I accept you into every area of me. Help me to overcome. Wash me with your blood and keep me until I see you and I live with you forever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If that is you, congratulations. You have taken the first step in walking in victory, which is having the victorious one in you. Please let us know by sending a WhatsApp or commenting in the comment section. And somebody from our team would like to reach out to you and let you know how you can continue to follow Jesus as you have begun today. For the rest of us, I just want to say thank you, church. May you have a wonderful day, a blessed day. May this week be filled with the developing, the growing of your ability to persist. As you experience challenge, I pray that you rise to it. I pray that you overcome. I pray that the Lord will help you develop the attitude that Caleb had, an attitude of persistence. We'll be gathering in our community groups through our saving teams and we'll be experiencing church and maybe discussing some of what we have learned today, praying with each other and helping each other develop this attitude of persistence. Please talk to your captain and make sure you participate in all that the Lord is doing and communicate it to somebody. Tell somebody who maybe hasn't heard that we are having a discussion in our serving teams. Tell somebody who maybe does not have a church that you can be a part of my church. Let's invite, let's anticipate, and let's participate in all that the Lord is doing. Have a blessed day, church. Amen.